thanks everybody for coming to this conference we've put together to honor Finest. He's been a great influence on all of us. He's been a almost lifelong friend for me. We've known each other for 38 years, and uh, I've benefited an enormous amount from, from knowing Finest and having him as a friend and colleague. Finest, that's as nice as I'm going to get. I ran into to Gene Fama in the hall yesterday, and uh, he, he asked uh, you know, what we're doing tomorrow, and uh, he'll be here for dinner. And he said, you know, I used to have lunch with Finest every day back in graduate school. And he paused and he said, I never understood anything that he said. <laughs> So that's going to be part of my theme today. Um, I've never quite reached the stage of being able to speak Finus, um, though after a time one develops an understanding of the language, um, if only because you've heard the same story so many times. Um, I first met Finus back at the Rand Corporation, uh, oddly enough, in 1975. I didn't meet him on campus at UCLA, um, when I was working for John Kogan. Uh, I'd gone to UCLA for graduate school for the simple and practical reason that they had palm trees. And uh, uh, I had the great fortune to encounter Finus. I hadn't in intended to study labor economics, but he convinced me um, with his uh, inestimable charm. Um, and, and, and I was influenced by a great many others while I was there. Armin, who's now gone, Harold Demsetz, and people with us today. Mike Ward um, was both a, a friend and mentor, Jim Smith, Bob Cotterman. And among my graduate student colleagues, Jim Pierce is here, Richard Souza, Bill Gould, who's not with us today. And I met my wife there too, so that was pretty good. Um, and I also uh, encountered Kevin for the first time. And he was taking Mike's class. I don't know if Mike remembers this. Where's Mike? I don't know. The, but the, yeah, I don't know if Mike remembers this, but I was grading exams. And I had a big stack of blue books. I'm going through them. And I, I, don't know. And I get this one, I said, Wow. So I, I went down to Mike's office. I said, who is this guy? And he said, I don't know. And then the next week, Kevin shows up in Mike's office and asks for his office hour, asks a question, answers it himself, and walks out the door. And, and Mike came to my office and said, who was that guy? And then he took Finus's class. and. He would show up to Finus's class only on occasion. He'd show up every couple of weeks, and he'd only stay for the first hour, and then he'd leave. No, he came in the middle of the class. Right, right. <laughs> and Finus said, who was that guy? So, <laughs> so anyway, we found out who he was, and, and we've been friends for him, with him for almost as long. Now, for me, at least, Finus was kind of the ideal mentor. He was, one might say, he kind of ignored me. And uh, he taught by example rather than just holding your hand and, and, and telling you what to do or, or assigning some project to you. Um, although he tried. He tried to give me a dissertation at the outset. He told me I should work on inter-industry wage differentials. And I looked at the data and I said, well, it seems clear to me that the smarter guys work in these high wage industries and the less smart guys work in the low wage industries. Not much to do here. Later on, it would become a research topic because somebody else claimed the opposite. So Kevin and I wrote a couple of papers together about that. Um, but the, the, the difference, the, 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 the sort of hands-off attitude was probably the reason that we became very good friends uh, even before I left graduate school. Uh, we're both a little stubborn, and he saw that in me. So perhaps based on that similarity, he once remarked to me, you know, you're a lot more like me than you want to admit. And I thought about that, and I said, you know, is that a compliment, or? <laughs> but he was completely right about that. I don't want to admit it, and I'm not going to admit it now. <laughs> now, um, Fina set wears many hats in addition to the one uh, up there. Um, at, his, at his birthday party recently, Jim Smith remarked on a, a comment of Finus is that when he was at UCLA, he would sell 75% of his time to UCLA, and the other 75% to Rand. <laughs> and then later on, the third 75% got sold to Welch Associates. 
and then there was Stata, and so on. And it's remarkable the number of areas in which he's had um, he's had such success. For those of you who have never been to the ranch, it's, it's on, I get to use another Jim Smith line. Finest when he moved down to Texas about 153 acres, right? Is that the right number? 130. Okay, 130 acres. And, and, and Jim's line is that Finest does not want all the land in Texas. He just wants every acre that touches his ranch. And so now, and now he's got 9,000 of them in a veterinary hospital, and he, uh, he's a very successful rancher and raiser of championship cutting horses. Now, let me say a little bit about Finus's, uh, Finus's work. Uh, and that's the main reason we're here to honor him, because he's had such an influence on, on all of us and on all of our careers. And not just, you know, like on our careers or that he, he supported us or something, but he taught us how to think about uh, problems. Now, so something about his influence. The, uh, his main influence on me, and I think many others like Kevin, it, it, is not from you know, reading his papers or even from taking his class. I, I probably could say most emphatically it's not from taking his class. Um, <laughs> um, it, it came from just sort of watching, if you understand what I mean. He's got an uncanny ability to know what a complex data set can tell you. And he's able to extract the truth, sometimes through enhanced interrogation methods, um, <laughs> and, and, and know exactly where the truth is hiding. And he's, he's patient in his good old boy sort of a way with an apprentice like me who's trying to learn the sorcerer's ways. I remember one time we were working on a project together back in graduate school. I said this a few weeks ago to him that uh, I came in, I said, well, you know, I'm going to try this, this, and this, and these regressions. And Finus leaned back in his chair and he said, boy, he liked to call me boy. <laughs> he said, I've run more regressions than anybody in the whole world. And I know when it's gonna work. But you just go right ahead. <laughs> and he was right that it didn't, it didn't work. Um, and I, I, I learned a lot from that, and I learned a little bit, not as much as he knows about uh, where to look uh, for, for, uh, for uh, the, the key results in a research project. Now, the other way Finus liked to teach all of us, and many of us have had this experience, was to tell you the same story 500 times. <laughs> now, those teaching moments came either in my office or in, in his office, if I happened to stumble in there, and he would strategically place his wheelchair near the blackboard and blocking the door so you couldn't get away. And, uh, and he would tell you about his papers. He, he loved to tell you about his papers. And he'd sit at the blackboard, he'd cover the blackboard with notation, and, and he'd tell you everything he'd done in this paper, and more than what he showed was in the paper. He'd tell you everything that went wrong, what he did about it, and he'd laugh, he'd chuckle about the way he tricked the data and stuff. And uh, you, the, these sessions came to be known among the junior faculty and the graduate students who worked closely with Finus as being Finusized because you were trapped in his office for a couple hours. I remember going home one time and my wife said, well, where you been? I said, well, I was in Finus's office. And she says, well, so what, are you, what, is he, what is he talking about? He said, well, I had one of his papers, his Sigma IJs all over the place. She says, Sigma IJ, well, th were those covariances or were those substitutional elasticities? I said, Yes, they were. <laughs> I'm confident they were one of those. Um, so we all, those, those sessions, sessions saved all of us a lot of effort in actually having, going back and reading his papers because he, taught, he loved to tell us about them. And I, I knew about, uh, uh, what was in a lot of his work even without reading. He told us everything in them. Um, uh, the only comparable experience I ever had was I once got trapped in Orley's office where he wanted to tell me about his wine regressions and fixed effects for, and you, I was looking at the door off for most of the conversation. The, the, the finest would pepper these sessions with other key insights for young economists. Um, uh, things that are really important, skills for young economists, like how to bend the rules at the 4-H livestock show. Um, suppose you had a pig with a wrinkled back. <laughs> 
And it, if you ever have one, I know exactly what to do <laughs> to get it ready for the show. Um, how to obtain the essential ingredient to inseminate a cow? But most of you don't know how to do that, and the story is actually a little bit apocryphal, like a lot of Finus's stories. I've always wondered whether his bro he really had brothers named Otis and Otis. <laughs> because he always told me that he did with that wry smile on his face. Um, there are also other things I learned about agricultural economics, like what's a spotter bull? Now really, how many of you in the room know what a spotter bull is? Ward knows what a spotter bull is. Cotterman knows what a spotter, spotter bull is. Kevin knows. Ellen knows because we told her. <laughs> you know, and so if you don't know, well, that was part of the returns that we got on our education, and we got it. Um, so we sort of have PhDs in, in agricultural economics from hanging around Finus. Now, since we're honoring Finus's work, I decided I'd go back and, and, and have a look. And I started, you know, I started with linear skill synthesis, but I especially liked um, education and production. And I started reading it, and the, here's the part I forgot. I always remember the, the part about finding that um, people with more education uh, realized larger returns to their schooling uh, in an environment where there was a lot of research going on. And this is, remember, this is, on, this is for people on the farm. But the beginning of the paper um, starts with an insight that's really relevant to us today in this conference and has been um, in studying inequality over the years, because the puzzle that he started with was that schooling had been increasing so much over many decades and he said, you know, factor ratios being what they are, you would think that the returns to schooling fell. And they didn't. And he argued that the reason was that there had been changes in the demand for schooling that had been, out, that had been keeping pace with changes in factor ratios. And that's proved to be a really key insight in the long front run for, under, for understanding the, the returns to schooling, the education skills in general. Now, the paper was published in, in 1970, and remember the premise that we, the puzzle he was looking at was that the returns to schooling had not fallen. And just to suggest that God has a sense of humor, as soon as he published the paper, the returns to schooling fell by a lot. <laughs> and so when I got to, when I hit the labor market, and Al over here hired me, um, and I got to Chicago, the uh, starting salary, the market market price starting salary nine months for assistant professors was the princely sum of seventeen thousand five hundred bucks, and, and uh, we all realize those returns have gone up a lot over time. And that was right at the bottom of the returns to education. And uh, and and our friend Richard Freeman then, following up on Finus's predictions, said, wrote a book called The Overeducated American, claiming that. Uh, factor ratios have gotten too high and that um, all these kids shouldn't be going on to college. And no sooner was the, uh, the ink dry on that one than God proved he had a sense of humor and he made the returns to education and skills go through the roof over the next 20 years. Um, but Finus's, Finus's point that um, skill bias technical change, you might call it, uh, is, has been driving the returns to schooling, has influenced a lot of people's work. You'll see it in a lot of people's work. You'll see it in David Otter's work. You'll see it in, in other work on inequality in education. So I think it's been um, hugely influential. And it's, you know, it's just like a throwaway at the beginning of that paper. It wouldn't have been essential to, to the rest of the premise in the paper. So I thought that was important. Later on, he worked on baby boom babies where factor ratios did matter. He worked on black-white wage differentials. We've heard about that today. Um, he worked on black pr progress after Miradal related to what I just said. He did a lot of work on minimum wages. He worked with Kevin on the, on the structure of wages. He even once wrote a paper with me where we, I think it's the only paper in his career that doesn't have a regression in it, right? <laughs> we, wrote, we wrote a theory paper together. Now, um, You know, I, me I mentioned that God had a sense of humor. Finus once mentioned to me, speaking of God, he once mentioned to me that either the world is linear, or it's linear in its logs, or God really is an SOB. <laughs> <laughs> so so the, his, his influence has been enormous over the years. I'm not going to go into all the details. But I think to this day, he's, he seems to be continuing to work 
on the problems that, that he started with early in his career. What are the returns to skill? How does it affect the, in, the income distribution? Um, what, if anything, can be done about those things? Um, and so there's been a remarkable consistency, and he's, as you've heard today, he's as insightful as he ever was. Now I want to tell you uh, a, a brief story. About a year ago, I went down to, uh, I called Finus up, or two years ago, I guess. I called Finus up and I said, we're going to come down to the ranch hangout, and then we're going to go down to uh, Austin City Limits in Austin and for the Robert Earl Keen Christmas show. And he said, all right. So we went down and we drove down. And uh, we went down there, and, and I had gotten to know Robert a little bit, so I asked him if he would come out and meet Finus because he's never been to one of these shows. But I didn't realize this, fi Finus hadn't been to a concert since 1961. When he was a graduate student here, I guess the department secretary said, we got to get him out. And they took him to see Ray Charles. So, so anyway, Robert came out to meet Finus, and Finus pretended that he was a little bit impressed. He kind of shrugged when I said, did you have a good time? So I let the clock run about a year and a half, and this past August, I was down in, uh, down in College Station for his birthday, and I walked into the, I walked into the, uh, let me just minimize this. Walked up to the restaurant, and he said, follow me. I need you to help me introduce something. And so, and I'm only showing you this picture so I can show you find a smiling. It so rarely happens. <laughs> the, 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 um, the back in the back room, he says, I want you to introduce the entertainment for tonight. And I walked in and he says, and there was Robert Earl Keene, who's one of the most legendary and famous musicians in, in Texas. So just to prove it to you, if I can get this picture up here. There he is, okay, and Finus is smiling. And, 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 and that, that's Finus in the middle. Uh, and, and the guy on the, on, uh, in the red shirt is Rich Brotherton. He's the, one of, he's the guitar player, and Robert's wearing the cowboy hat. And Now, the, the reason I showed you that is for Finus' smile, because the only time I ever saw him smile more than that, when have a really big grin, was when this happened. And that's a picture, that's not Finus riding. <laughs> that's Ronnie Rice on Finus's horse, a uh, tough-hearted cat, at the Futurity, where he invited me to come down and, and just hang out and watch his horses compete. Now, the Futurity is, a cut, is as you can see here, is, a, is an event for cutting horses. And Finus raises cutting horses on his ranch. And he raises really good ones. And Ronnie's the, the trainer, and he's kind of a legend in his own right as a, as a trainer. So uh, I think out of, what are there, 650 horses entered in this thing, something like that? Well, Finus' horse won the grand championship, which means that he's going to be doing OK on the stud fees for a while with, his, with his, his stable of horses. So we tried to think of what would make Finus happy. So Kevin and I were like kicking this around. What do you get for a guy who's got like 9,000 acres? He's got Stata. He's got you know several houses here, hither and yon. And so I asked Tamara what, what, about gift X. And she says, well, you know, Finus kind of makes fun of people who like have X. <laughs> and I said, well, but this would be like, this X would have to do with precisely what he was so happy about in the championship of his horse. So we agreed to do it. So what, we, what Kevin and I agreed on is we would have a bronze made of the tough-hearted cat and Ronnie up there. And, and here it is. So that's, I think this wheel's over here. There you go. Now, Thank you. and that's Ron, it actually looks like Ronnie up there. <laughs> and and that's, that's right off of the photo that we used. Now we got a little carried away because I said, you know, Kevin, we're making one of these and marginal cost gotta be lower. So, <laughs> so why not, you want one? He said, "Yeah." So Kevin and I got him too. <laughs> and then, and then, uh, actually, the sculptress is Jan Mapes, who I think you she knows you a little bit. You might not remember her, and she knows Ronnie. Um, and I, she said, "Well, what about Ronnie?" I said, "I said, yeah. What, what about Ronnie? Should we get?" So Ronnie's getting one too. So you've only got one of four, but you got number one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So anyway, Finus, you know, that's really all I have to say. You've been a, a 
<laughs> you've been a you've been a, uh, a great mentor. You've been a great friend, and I valued every moment of it. Thank you.